Hello everybody, my name is Luis Lopez Soria. I'm an Applied AI Solutions Architect here at AWS. And in this episode, we're going to learn how to get your Amazon Personalized POC into production. If you haven't watched our other videos in our deep dive video series, I would highly suggest you checking out the links in the description. This is episode number five, where we're going to be talking about the operations category on how to bring your POC into production and in future episodes, we are going to learn about advanced architectures, A-B testing and evaluation, and finally, uh, monitoring and pricing. Under the hood, Amazon Personalized handles all of the steps you'll find in a typical machine learning pipeline. The import and expansion of your data, the selection of hyperparameters, training, optimizing, and hosting your models, as well as the hosting of a real-time feature store, also known as the event tracker. From here, your responsibility is to integrate these recommendations into your application by consuming your Amazon Personalized Managed Endpoint. Let's take a look at a typical Amazon Personalized project lifecycle. First, you define the business use case for your Amazon Personalized POC. Second, you identify the data stores from where you will be getting your data sets, as well as getting the brand buy-in from internal teams, allowing you to utilize Amazon Personalized in your application. Then you got started with your very first Amazon personalized deployment. Here is where you did all of your data cleaning, exploration, and trained your first couple models. Once you were comfortable with your POC offline metrics, you moved into the online validation phase of your model where you A-B tested Amazon personalized versus other experiments against well-defined business metrics such as click-through rate, revenue, conversion, etc. The question now is, how do I elevate this POC into production? Before we jump into the ML ops, let's take a quick refresher on the Amazon personalized components you deploy during your POC. The first thing to note is that there are a lot of ways of deploying the components in the following architecture. These components can be deployed through the AWS SDK using your favorite languages, the AWS console, or even using the AWS CLI. The first thing to note is the biggest layer of abstraction in Amazon Personalized is your dataset groups. This is how you can keep your experiments from affecting each other. Then you have your datasets, the interactions datasets, user and item metadata, which each of their respective schemas and import jobs. From there, you have your solutions. I have listed three solutions using each of the recipes available in Personalized with a couple solution versions under them, as well as a campaign per solution pointing to a specific solution version. If you would like to stream real-time events, you can attach the event tracker to your dataset group. Now, here's where the fun part begins. How do we automate the creation of all of these components? The rest of the video, we're gonna see a solution overview that you can find in the description of this link. It's going to be hosted in our GitHub page. Before we do that, let's define what MLOps means. MLOps refers to a methodology that is built on applying DevOps practices to machine learning workloads. Just like DevOps relies on the intersection of people, processes, and technology to optimize the end-to-end -end activities required to develop, build, and operate machine learning workloads. In this solution, we use SAM, which is serverless application model to generate a CloudFormation template. If you're not familiar with CloudFormation or SAM, these are our services that allow you to deploy your infrastructure as code. This template deploys an AWS Step Function workflow, as well as an input bucket with an S3 trigger to start the execution of this MLOps pipeline. Once your parameter file is dropped in S3, it triggers the Step Functions workflow, which automates the creation of all of the Amazon personalized components we saw in the previous architecture slide. This includes your dataset group, your datasets, your solutions, your solution versions, and even your campaigns. Once the step function workflow is complete, an SNS topic will send a not an email notification to your admin, to your admin notifying the successful creation of your Amazon personalized deployment. Now let's take a look at how you need to structure your S3 and your parameters file. Here we can see the directory of the structure of the S3 bucket. The solution expects your data to be in. Amazon Personalized supports the multi-file upload so you can drop all of the CSV files that you want in their, respectory, in their respective directory. Note that the parameter JSON files is at the top of the directory, 
once S3 detects a new parameters.json file, using an S3 trigger, it will start the state machine execution as, so, as shown in the previous slide. On the right hand side, we can see a small example of the parameter JSON file. Here is where you need to specify the names of your resources, datasets, datasets schemas, and any other solution and campaign configuration that you would like this execution to account for. The S3 trigger will start the execution of this state machine. Each step in this graph is an individual Lambda function. There are steps that require to finish executing in a long time. So we have implemented a retry mechanism that it will invoke the Lambda functions periodically with a backup rate of 1.5, meaning the longer the job is running, the larger the wait time between Lambda executions will be. We did this because Lambda has a 15 minute timeline. And as you can imagine, your import jobs or your training of solutions can take more than 15 minutes. If at any point in time there is an error, it could be a schema validation, an import job failing, or anything else that could happen in these step functions, the state machine will exit and a failed execution will notify you and your admin through an email. Also, if the step functions are successfully completed, it will notify you through an email as well. Now let's take a look at a demo on how to deploy the solution and trigger the state machine by, spe by specifying a parameter file and a samples data that you can find in the GitHub link that is specified in the description of this video. The link in the video description is going to take you to the Amazon Personalized Samples GitHub page. Here is where you can find instructions on how to deploy this solution if you're not following it alone in the video. Now let's clone the GitHub page so we can start deploying our solution. This GitHub page has a lot of valuable examples that you can use in order to build your POC or even elevate your POC into production. After cloning the repo, you need to navigate into the repo itself under next steps, under operations, under MLOps folder, and you're going to find all the code that you're gonna need in order to deploy the solution. So here we're gonna navigate into the steps, functions, uh, code, where you're gonna find a template, the YAML file. This is a SAM, template that it will be translated into a CloudFormation template where it will deploy the step functions uh, definition. So let's build the template with some build. And now we can deploy it using sim deployed with the flag guided. Here, you're going to specify a couple parameters. So I'm going to specify the stack name. So video series. The region we can keep as US is one. We're going to need an email address. So I'm going to use my email address. You can also specify the parameter file name if you would like to change it. Here is where you can change that, or you can keep the same. I'm gonna keep the default. Do you wanna confirm the changes before you deploy? I usually say yes. Also yes. And also yes. The change set might take a minute, and then you need to confirm your changes before you deploy. So I'm gonna hit yes. Now that the SAM template has been deployed. We can navigate to our Amazon console to CloudFormation. We have a video series. And here we can see some of the resources that were deployed by the CloudFormation template. The most important one is going to be your step function definition. Here we can see the definition of the step functions. And as, as we mentioned during the presentation, each of these steps is a Lambda function that will be executed during after the S3 bucket has been created. After, the, after you drop the files in S3. 
Let's find your S3 bucket. As we can see here, the, the S3 bucket is empty. But you can see that there is an event that is looking for your parameters.json file, which will invoke a Lambda function. Now we need to go back to our environment. And if we go back to our instructions, we have an example on how to sync your data in order to trigger the step functions. And as you see here, I'm in the same directory where my examples.data files are at. I need to go to my CloudFormation template, or I can get it from here. My S3 bucket name. So as we can see here, my items metadata and my interactions metadata, my interaction CSV file has been uploaded to my newly created S3 bucket. And now I am about to copy my parameters.json file into S3. Before we look at the execution of the step functions, let's take a look at what we have deployed from our examples. So as we can see here, we have the definitions for the interactions schema for the items schema, and we are creating three solutions, one for user personalization, one for sims, one for personalized ranking. We're attaching an event tracker, and we're also creating campaigns per solutions that we're creating. If we navigate to our step functions, we should be able to see an execution run. This one right here. And the execution is running right now. So I'm gonna pass the record, I'm gonna pause the recording and I will show you when I get the notification in my email when all of this has been completed. We can see here that our step functions execution was successful. It took about an hour and 20 minutes to do all of the imports, training and even deploying the campaign. If we navigate inside of this execution, we can see that our nodes are mostly green. We have an orange node that is telling us that it caught an error, but this is expected as we did not specify a user's metadata data set in our S3 bucket, nor we specified it in our parameters file. Remember, the interactions data set is the only required data set that you need in order to create an Amazon personalized deployment. If you are interested to see what your Lambda functions are using as an input, you can always navigate to the step input and look at the object that is passed into your Lambda function execution. And if you are interested to see what is the step output, meaning the reply from your Lambda function, you can also navigate into the step, out, the step output and look at the JSON object. This Lambda function that we're looking right now is the one that notifies your users and I have the email that we got from SNS telling me that my Amazon personalized endpoint is now ready to be used. Now that we have seen the demo of our solution, let's take a look at some of Amazon personalized best practices. Amazon personalized supports the import of your data being encrypted. You can specify a role allowing Amazon personalized to use a KMS script to decrypt your data or even use the default S3 server-side default encryption. So remember, encrypt your data. One of the most frequently asked questions I get is how often should I retrain my Amazon personalized deployment? The answer is it depends on how much interactions data you generate on a daily basis. 
a good rule of thumb is to retrain your models one per, once per week or two, depending on how much data your application is generating every day. Sizing your campaign is a very interesting exercise. For this, you want to identify your sustained minimum TPS traffic on the website or app that, that you will be consuming this application. Our managed endpoints have auto scaling by default, and this auto scaling will account for the spikes of your TPS consumption, and it will bring it down to your minimum TPS, sustained TPS. So remember, take advantage of Amazon personalized support of auto scale. And the last best practice advice I can give you is to delay unused resources. If you have as I would like to call them zombie campaigns, which are not being utilized, you are still being charged for those campaigns. So make sure that you delete them if you are not using them. You can refer to these additional resources by following the links in the description of this video. We have really good documentation. The blog posts are awesome. And also the sample notebooks and reference architecture in our AWS samples GitHub page is a really good place to get started or even to elevate your POC into production. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next episode.